everyone. So I'm going to be doing my presentation today on how to write a great CV, the do's and don'ts. So I'm going to be running through a few different things to um, give you some tips and tricks really around how to put together the best CV. I think first of all, it's important to accept that CVs can only do so much. Um, what I mean by that is obviously they're a tool to kind of open doors and to get you to interview. But from there, you can sell yourself so much more in person than a document ever would be able to. That said, we still need to make our CV the best possible um, document to represent ourselves that we can do. So I'm going to give you some advice around that from a recruiter's perspective. Um, obviously, a lot of it is personal opinion. I do think a lot of it's right. Um, I look at a lot of CVs every day. And these are just things that I've kind of picked up as good do's and don'ts. But open to hearing people's thoughts at the end as well about anything that they feel I might have missed or might be wrong on. So I'm also going to briefly touch on using social media in your job on and about personal branding as well. That is going to be super brief, but I do have a whole talk on those two things. So that's maybe something we can revisit um, in more detail if you're interested or I can share my slides with you um, one on one if that's something you want to learn more about. So we're going to start today talking about the basics. Um, basic being the keyword because I do like a basic and simple layout for a CV. Um, so I would say font size around 10 or 11. Same font style throughout as well. We do see a lot that kind of chop and change and I just think it looks a little messy. Um, I prefer no images on there as well. So pictures of yourself or ISTQB logo. And areas to include, I would say, would be an opening statement, a skill section, a work history or experience section, education, and then a hobbies and interest area, or an area as well that you can list any skills that you're currently picking up. So as I said at the start there, I would kind of implore you not to include a picture of yourself or things like the ISTQB logo or certain tech logos. I just think that this can look really messy and it also might affect how it's run through an ATS, which is an applicant tracking system, which a lot of our clients do use. Now, having an image of yourself or personal details on there, like your day of birth, um, sometimes they'll see marital status, things like that. That can essentially promote unconscious bias in the hiring managers slash recruiters that are looking at your CV. So for anyone that's not heard of unconscious bias, it, it's basically, and it's also known as implicit bias, it's essentially underlying attitudes and stereotypes that people unconsciously attribute to another person or group of people that affect how they understand or engage with that person or group. So we're not talking about out and out discriminating against people or consciously making a decision. This is unconscious um, beliefs that we may have acquired without even knowing over time. So I would just say to alleviate that and to stay kind of safely away from that, don't put anything on there, like a picture of yourself or date of birth, marital status, anything like that, that might potentially trigger that unconscious bias. In terms of format, personally, I prefer a Word document. You might not know this, but recruiters quite often will put a header and footer on a CV or will have like a cover letter or a cover note that we have to put on your CV. It's just a lot easier to transfer the information over if it is a Word document instead of like converting a PDF or trying to copy and paste a PDF, that always ends in tears. So that would be my advice. Spell check. This is a really obvious one. I hope that I don't come across as condescending, but you wouldn't believe how many people do miss this. This is absolutely key. Use the spell checker on Word or whatever platform you're using, but I would also have a friend or a family member proofread it for you as well. So hiring managers, particularly in test, care about attention to detail. I have had a lot of people know it over the years because of poor attention to detail on CV, spelling mistakes, grammatical errors. So it's just something to be hyper aware of. Now, I would also say this is another kind of frequent error is um, contact details or missing off contact details, should I say. Please make sure you provide at minimum an email address, but ideally also a phone number and um, a location. So we don't need your full postal address or postcode or anything like that, but we do need to know where you're based so we can match you up to suitable jobs. So even if that's just Manchester or West Yorkshire or something a little bit more vague, if that's what you're comfortable with. So they're the basics that I would say, make sure that you are including and following when you're pulling together your CV. 
What I would also say um, is a lot of the the detail is around the content. So we'll chat about that a little bit more. But again, with the content, just making sure that that layout is consistent throughout, spell check is consistent throughout. So to get started, I would always recommend an opening slash personal statement. As a junior, this is absolutely essential as well. This is basically where you will sell yourself, mention any transferable skills that you have and explain why you're looking to break into testing. Without this context, the hiring manager might not understand why you've applied for that role or worse yet, they might think that you've applied by accident or without knowing what it entails and kind of disregard your application straight away. So make sure you're providing that context as to why you're applying for a role in testing or tech if you've got no background in it especially. So if you lack commercial experience, this is where you want to make up for it in enthusiasm. I'd say with an opening statement, you want it to be fairly short and sweet, no more than a paragraph, kind of five to ten lines. I'd also employ you to think about keywords. So recruiters quite often will use Googling searching and keyword searching on CV databases to find relevant candidates. So if you could mention any key terms in there, such as software testing, QA, ISTQB, Agile, that's really going to help to get you on the radar of more people people who can help you get the job. So leading quite nicely on from there is the skills and technology section. So this might not apply to those of us who are trying to secure our first roles in tech because you might not have any skills or technologies. However, if you picked up any skills or knowledge from self-study, please list them here in clear bullet points. It's so important, however, never to lie or oversell your skills and knowledge. You will be caught out by a hiring manager. It will be awkward. I would say honesty is the best policy. I know that hiring managers would much prefer you to just be honest and say, I don't have that experience or um, I don't have that experience, but I will look into it before the next interview or I'll make sure that I research it before I start the job with you. Obviously, sell that passion and enthusiasm, but be really honest about what you know. You will get caught out, as I say, even if it's not the first stage. At some point in that process, it will catch you out and it will not reflect positively on you. So just don't oversell your experience. So moving on from skills slash technologies into work history. So make sure that this is laid out clearly with dates of each employment clear for you to read. So I would say as well, you always want this to be in chronological order. So your most recent role first. Now, again, if you've not had any commercial experience in tech or testing, try and explain how the roles and skills you've gained in your previous roles might link back to tech or testing. Things like attention to detail, time management, communication skills, dealing with customers, that's all super, super relevant to testing. And you can also mention any freelance or voluntary work here as well. I know quite a few people use like Uber testers and platforms like that. Super relevant. Make sure that's on there. Following on from there, I would always then go into education. So some people will put education before work history. Perhaps if you're a fresh graduate, that might be relevant. But I tend to think work history is normally more relevant. So I would go work history, education. And again, make sure that this is really clear to read. This section is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but you can also add here any ongoing training. So for example, if you are studying for your ISTQB or you're currently carrying out any online courses, this is the area to shout about them. It will also massively help you stand out against any other junior applicants you're competing against. Um, so I definitely implore you all to try and do as much self-study as your work slash life allows. I know a lot of people that attend the event already have, you know, a full-time job, family commitments, childcare. We've all got a lot going on in life. Um, and I completely understand it can be really hard to find time to invest in yourself and invest into self-study. But that will be a deal breaker and a big factor in you securing the role. They will want to see, and um, the hiring manager will want to see that you've been proactive and started the wheels in motion on that journey. So have a little look, see what you could do viably with your time, see what you could fit in um, and start start learning because I think it will be massively, massively helpful um, to have a few things on there on your CV. Now, leading down from there, last but not least, I actually really like this section. It is the interest slash hobby section. So I personally read a lot of CVs, as I said at the start, and I really enjoy reading people's interests and hobbies. Um, it's a chance for a CV to sh show a little bit of personality, really, and again, stand out. Obviously, extra points. It's particularly good if you can link this back to the job that you've applied for. So obviously, be honest about what hobbies you, ha you have. But I would also say... 
if you can mention anything for a little bit of a brownie point, so anything like, oh, I like watching out for emerging technologies, or here's a perfect example, I attend software testing events in my own time, like UA Beginners Club. It's a great talking point at interview and again shows that interest and kind of seriousness to get into testing. So moving away from the CV, other kind of points to consider a little bit more focused around social media. So linking to your social media presence is something you may not have thought about, but it's really key to know that social media is increasingly being used by professionals who are passionate about what they do and who are wanting to share their knowledge and thoughts with others. In particular, Twitter, I always flag Twitter as a perfect example because it's where I spend a lot of my time. Um, it's where I met a lot of people in the testing industry and I think there's a lot of networking and knowledge sharing going on there that's so, so vital. Obviously, thanks, I suppose, to COVID, um, long gone are the days of having to attend face-to-face -face networking events or face-to-face -face interviews to meet others in your industry. We now live in a world where you can tweet, message and speak with people with the click of a few buttons. I would always recommend as a starting point, popping your LinkedIn URL to your CV. But have a little think beyond that. Is there anything else that I could include that will be relevant on my CV? So as I said there, Twitter, you might have a personal Twitter account, but then you might want to set up a work one and include that. GitHub to share work examples, coding examples, blog sites to also do the same, share thoughts, opinions. You might even be active on YouTube. This is all super relevant and, um, you know, stands out again. I think a lot of people don't think to include this. You don't have to only talk about work on these platforms that you include. Again, showing who you are and your personality is just as important. But just remember, being professional is always key. So don't link back to a Twitter profile that doesn't mention anything about testing and it's all your kind of personal opinions and, you know, things that just aren't relevant or things that maybe people couldn't interpret and it could be a negative. Um, so just obviously be sensible with what you include on your CV. But again, you know, put yourself out there in these different circles. Um, I think that will be massively useful. So another thing that social media is super, super useful for is connecting before an interview. So you have done all the hard work, you have put together an excellent CV and you've got an interview request. Amazing. The recruiter that you're working with or the company will probably have given you the name of who will be interviewing you. So, you know, John Smith, for example. Now, I think it's great to connect before an interview with that person. I'm not talking about stalker level detail, like let's add them on Facebook, follow them on Instagram. I think LinkedIn, maybe Twitter are the most appropriate places and ways to do this. Essentially what I'm thinking is, is useful about this is it shows number one, that you've done some research and you've looked into them, you're taking the process seriously. You may also find out something about them that you can drop into the interview um, from doing a lot of air research. So it might be something trivial like what team they support or what their hobbies are. But then you might also see, you know, a recent blog post about work or a recent update about work that you can drop into conversation. Gives you something to mention at interview and it will mean that you stick out in their, their mind um, against all of the interviews they've done that day. So I think that's a great tip. Um, and what I would say is you know, there's going to be ups and downs in this job hunt. You're not necessarily going to get the first job that you go for. This is all still very relevant. Even if you go get the job this time or get to work with this person this time, you've got that connection there for the future. You can start investing in your network today. Now, I think, I can't remember if it was a blog or a talk, but I know that Beth Marshall has done one of those two things um, all about something called the hidden job market. And the hidden job market um, she obviously speaks about it in a tech, like a tech testing um, perspective. It's basically a, a job market that is under wraps. Um, so there's lots of people moving jobs and getting jobs, and these jobs aren't necessarily ever advertised on like Indeed or company careers pages or with the recruiters like myself. It's all done between people knowing people, recommendations, referrals. They might put it on Twitter, but not put it on LinkedIn. It's all about putting yourself in the places where these people are and stepping up to these opportunities. Now, it might seem a bit unfair. Oh, there's all these roles and no one's even putting them out there. How am I going to find them? 
obviously this is what I mean about investing in your network, investing into connecting with prospective hiring managers in your area, connecting with prospective recruiters in your area, really investing and putting yourself in those key places. Um, I'll try and find the information on Beth's talk because I know that that will be um, something that a lot of people are really interested in. I'll definitely let you know about that. What I wanted to mention as well is obviously I'm always here to help. Um, I'm on the Slack channels. My email address is on the page there. Please feel free to share your CV with me and I'll just give you like an open and honest opinion and appraisal of what I think and what you might want to change and what might help you, you know, shifting around, editing. Um, might be speaking out of turn here, but I'm sure that Chris and Ken are exactly in the same boat as myself. More than happy to help with that if you wanted it from like a hiring manager tech perspective um, as well. Just wanted to quickly mention one other thing, um, which is our Clickstarters tool. So Clickstarters is part of the searchability um, group of companies and searchability is the IT recruitment agency that I work for. And Clickstarters is all about getting candidates um, who are kind of career switches, I suppose, into tech and digital um, job roles. So if you haven't even got like the bare bones of your CV or you're, you just want to start fresh, this tool can help you by you basically input the information and it pulls together something really lovely for you. Um, it's completely free and it's built by searchability. So with what recruiters look for in mind. Um, so, you know, no harm at all in checking that out. So from there, um, it'd be great to hear if anyone has got any questions at all. You might not feel comfortable asking them now. You've got my contact details. Um, but is there anything that anyone would like to kind of pick my brains about while I'm here?